<laughs> Say hot dog diggity dog. Hot dog diggity dog. <laughs> What's up guys, Pat here with Project Goldie and a big shoehorn. This is going to help me fit a V8 into this 2002 Chevy Blazer. I picked up an 02 Chevy Blazer two-wheel drive, two-door for a song. It is rust-free, all one color, never been wrecked, and it is in rather decent shape to have picked it up for 500 bucks. I got it with a blown transmission and a good 4.3 liter motor. So at this point, I pulled a couple of things off of the Blazer and i sold the motor so now at this point i owe that blazer fifty dollars that's right it paid me fifty dollars to come home at this point so now it's time to get started this right here i called it a shoehorn at the beginning and what this is is this is a side of an air box cover and it comes from hooker blackheart i picked this up for about uh i want to say it was like 152 shipped or something like that so yes now i'm in the hole 100 bucks for this blazer but this is a really good start. Since I'm wanting to keep all of my air conditioning and my heat and my fuel injection and all that, I want all my gauges to work. Since I've got all that and I'm that goal in mind, I guess what I'm saying, I'm wanting to make some room. So this right here is gonna replace the side of the air box. I don't see an actual instructional video for this on YouTube, so I'm gonna make one. So let's get started. So right here is our factory air box. We've got our heater core here. Here's our EVAP and our accumulator. Now we're wanting to keep all of this. Now when we put this LS in here, the valve covers are gonna be in here really tight and they're coil on the valve covers. So right here on this back one, there won't actually be room to mount that valve or that coil if we don't clearance this. And this factory box, quite frankly, you just see I just pulled pieces. It's crumbling this outer cover on this factory box. So getting rid of this factory out, outer piece and replacing that uh, blacker or hooker black heart. Why did I say that? Replacing that hooker black heart will give us a little more room. So let's grab a tape measure just to see how much more room. So I'm going to measure right over here off of the steering shaft over to the air box in a couple of places just to see how much room we bought for our investment. And I know back in the day, we used to do these conversions and we would have to cut. There wasn't ever anything there. We'd wind up having to cut a corner, kind of epoxy that junk in and it just never really looked good. This right here, if I can buy it and it looks good, that'll make me happy. So right there is 23 and a half inches. Right there is about 25 as measured from the steering column shaft. Let's get started. Real quick, I've got my EPA Universal 608 and 609. So just before I get started, I've got to tell old government man that this thing had no pressure on it. Of course, I did not have to uh, remove any refrigerants, nor did I bleed any out. So that's going to save me 30 something thousand dollars if old government man sees this. The first thing I'm going to do is future me when I get that engine put in, this little stud is going to stick out just enough that I'm not going to be able to get this air box out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and chop this right off. Now we got a nice little flush fit. And why did I chop that stud off before I took the nut off? Well, quite frankly, when I thread that nut backwards, that nut is gonna clean up those threads. But let's go ahead and get cranking, man. I've got an extension and a 10 mil. And we're going to go ahead and buzz this thing right off of here. Let's go ahead and unplug plug our blower motor and then unplug our resistor over here. Put all of our hardware in a place for safekeeping. More of this old brittle crap is falling apart. And now we've got it. Dude, that whole half just fell off. That thing was just ready to go. Look at this. Just crumbles apart. And that was a good find. Right there in the blend door is an old air freshener. That could have gotten in there and kept that blend door from moving back and forth. So yeah, good find. Let's throw that thing away. 
So the previous firewall bolts were a 10 mil. This right here is a 730 seconds. We're gonna zip these off. This is the engine side of our blower box here. Let's go ahead and pull these off with the rest of that busted up. You can see the remnants of that busted up old plastic. It's just, uh, you know, 21 years old and uh, it hasn't aged very well. See if this thing will come away from its home. Here we go. Wow, that's actually cleaner inside there than I expected. I thought this was going to be full of leaves and trash. The old HVAC guy in me kind of was wanting to have to clean this. I've got some condenser cleaner over here. I was wanting to clean, dilute it down and clean this evaporator out. But I'm guessing I am not going to have to. So let's go ahead and remove our resistor box here we're going to need to pop this into the new one just a few. of course that wanted to start hammering as soon as I started talking and boom there is our resistor box so here we can see the profiles down the side this is the replacement and this is the factory so you can see how this one right here just goes a lot flatter, a lot quicker. And that's where our room for our coil is gonna come from. Again, factory versus replacement. So since this is a 94 to 2004, I've actually got to cut off these right here. I've got to cut these flush. Let me back this up so you can see this one and this one and this one so these three have got to be cut off flush so i'm going to go ahead and take care of that really quickly one down two to go I can feel these surfaces on the new. They've done a really good job of scuffing this, but I can feel that it still has mold release agent. So it's kind of that rubbery feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and degrease this really quickly. That way our seals and everything will stick without anything keeping that from happening there. So, yeah, I probably should have worn a rubber glove. I could just feel the neurotoxins. There we go, that should be nice and degreased. And they give you a box of this rubber seal here. Now this rubber seal, it is a bit thick. If you need it to be thinner, you can pull it thinner. But otherwise, we're just gonna be applying this to the outer edges, that way we're not breathing in anything out of the road. So this little razor knife right here, a buddy of mine got it for me for Christmas. It's made for, by Millspin, made in the USA. It's a brass magnus. And dude, I freaking love this thing. This is what we're gonna be using to cut our rubber material here today. That old nasty cover has busted and stuck to all of these screw heads. So I'm having to take a razor knife and clean all of that old crusty junk off of the washers. Cause I don't want that old crusty junk deteriorating and making my screws loose later. 
Again, freaking love this little knife. So right here is something that I did not foresee. This is on the bottom side. Now on this bottom side, we cut this big stud out and we haven't allowed for the fact that our screw is too long. So this thing is bolting or bottoming out and not squeezing everything in. So do I want to shorten the screw or just drill it out? I think I'm probably gonna through drill this. So let's get a drill bit set and closest match this up. There we go. I'm going to take an eighth of an inch. Let me double, double check. Yeah, that right there looks okay-ish, but I am going to go just a touch smaller because we can always hog it out. We can't add material. So let's start with the 764. And just go ahead and poke this hole all the way through. That way our screw... Oh, you junky, junky drill. Ha! <laughs> ah. I freaking hate this Porter cable. Let me go get a good one. Boom, we're back. We got our trusty DeWalt. So let's go ahead and poke this through. There we go. Now we'll run that home and we'll be sitting pretty. There we go. Our seal is there. So let's go ahead and put our resistor back in here. Now this is cool, they put little brass knurled inserts there and you get some screws that come in a little baggie. So you're gonna ditch your factory hardware. Let's start those by hand so that I don't cross thread them with the drill. dog so i ditched their stripping and i went ahead and just used a black caulk around this because that stripping just would not stay put so i would rather just go ahead and put something that will stay put um i tried to degrease it again that stuff just didn't stick so uh this is going to be much better so i'm going to let this skin up and we're going to put this on the firewall so i've got all of this wiped off nice and clean so everything will seal up it's not that it was incredibly dirty in the first place but let's go ahead and lay these. There are two notches right here on the bottom. And those two notches will lay on those studs and kind of give you a third hand. So that is a good little feature that they did. There we go. So let's go ahead and start running our bolts in. Stay put. There we go, we got that one. And voila, there it is. So let's measure this again and see where we're at. We're gonna measure from steering shaft to air box. I know the airbox looks physically slimmer, but it didn't gain us a whole lot. We're like 23 and an eighth. And the 25 actually rolls over a little more. It's like maybe 25 and a quarter. I guess maybe that's all we need for just a little bit of room there for our coil. So how does this thing fit? Well, it would appear that the overall fit and finish of this is pretty nice. I definitely like that they had put those brass inserts there for those screws for our resistor. Everything else fits around rather nicely. So yeah, I think this thing did pretty okay. Everything fits over here like it's supposed to. I'm just a little skeptical because the tape measure didn't really show us anything. But, uh, you know, hopefully by the time the valve cover gets in here, we've got room for our ignition coils. So yeah, this thing is gonna turn out pretty nice. I've already been out here trying to degrease and clean on this. I want everything nice and clean before I get that motor in there. 
because I want this thing to just be a good point A to point B driver. Yeah, it wasn't bad getting rid of all of this old crumbly crap. I mean, this is 23 year old plastic. So yeah, if anything, hopefully we gained a little bit of room, but at least we got rid of some junk that would wind up just falling apart and being a problem later. So anyway, y'all check out the rest of the channel. Hopefully we got more stuff coming soon. I am tickled with this project so far. I, I'm just hoping to have this thing done and maybe, I don't know, maybe by next spring be cruising around in this little V8 air conditioned, fuel injected, just a really nice little runner. I want a nice choppy cam, I want to drop this thing down. Hopefully everything happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed that good luck, money, and health lets us do this. Y'all take care. We'll see you next video. I love you.